Welcome to WebRTC Live. In WebRTC Live, we cover the latest technical topics and business use cases for WebRTC and live video. As always, this episode is brought to you by WebRTC Ventures, leading integrators of WebRTC video into your custom application. Welcome back to WebRTC Live. I'm your host, Aaron Syme, founder and CEO of WebRTC Ventures. WebRTC Ventures is a custom design and development agency focused on building live video applications. We're here to help you take your application live. You can learn more about us at webrtc.ventures. In today's episode, I'm excited to welcome back Alan Quayle. Alan is the founder of Tad Hack Global, the largest series of worldwide telecom hackathons with the goal of making programmable communications accessible to everyone. Alan's going to talk with us today about some of the best telecommunications hacks he's seen this year at the Tad Hack event. So welcome back, Alan. Great to have you. And thank you for having me, Aaron. It's great to be here. Yeah, always good to have you back. Um, always interesting to see what's going on at these hackathons. We've certainly participated in them um, many times in our team. Uh, it's a great opportunity just to sort of stretch your uh, your programming muscles a little bit, play with some new APIs, learn about other vendors in the space, do something kind of fun and creative. So, and and so they're great for people kind of in the industry like our team, as well as newcomers and students and people sort of interested in this very, very fast growing space that we're in, uh, in this sort of remote for, remote first world that we live in now. Exactly. That's true. And it is. I mean, it's that diversity. I mean, we've got the uber geeks like yourselves that come in and, and you know, you can play around in a topic or a problem area that you see you know, every day, but it's like you can actually afford like a weekend to, well, let's see what happens if we do this, you know? Right. And again, it's a great example for the vast array. I mean, we have students, we have people who aren't coders taking part, that are part of a team that are solving a specific problem. So again, that diversity is great. And, you know, it, it, we really, yeah, I mean, I, I've always maintained that, you know, after fire, you know, telecommunications was the next most important technology, you know, <laughs> and let's face it, you know, in uh, the pandemic, it certainly has been shown that, but we're yeah. seeing, you know, year after year, the, you know, the technology is being more and more democratized. So, you know, it, they become more and more powerful. You don't have to be an uber geek to be able to do some pretty sophisticated stuff. And people are mashing them up and using them in so many different ways. I just, just one point um, between, September when we ran Tadhack Global, and then uh, December when we ran Tadhack Mini Orlando before Envire and Gage, just seeing how far the subspace API had jumped and how easy it had become for virtually all the developers in Orlando to just within a few minutes, and you'll, you can see in some of the hacks they were saying, we got subspace working in a couple of minutes and we can see the improvement. You know, it, it's, again, <laughs> it's just great endorsement of all the work everyone in our industry is doing to basically make telecommunications as easy, as accessible to as many people as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, so Alan, tell us a little bit about it. Well, first, let's back up for those who may not already be familiar with TADHACK. Tell us what Tad Hack is and a little bit about the events you hosted this year. Yep, absolutely. So let me jump to some slides and some videos, sure. if that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, let me make sure I'm sharing the right thing. So hopefully you can see Tad Hack Global as a presentation slide there. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Excellent. You got it. Great. Um, oh, no. I, you know what? I, we were practicing it earlier. That's There we go. Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, review what happened in September uh, with TAD Hack Global. So this is a global hackathon. The TAD stands for Telecom Application Development. We're a broad, you know, sort of, uh, you know, it, it, it can be anything that's sort of communications or technology related. We've had hacks, you know, on Ethereum. We've had hacks uh, doing stuff, interesting things with, for example, Carrefour, a, a supermarket chain. So, you know, I would say for us, the telecoms piece is the root because it's fundamental to virtually everything we do. Uh, and then from there, we add in lots of cool technologies. Now, for uh, global this year, 
we had five sponsors. We had Symbol, AI, so that's conversation intelligence, Jambons, which is an open source CPaaS, Telnix, which is a full suite of uh, programmable communication capabilities, Subspace, which of course is faster than light travel, and Arva Network, which is SMS your way. So without them, wouldn't be possible to run Tatak Global. But behind the global sponsors are lots and lots and lots of organizations. So this is the partners that make this happen. So for example, with Tatak South Africa, MTN has been there and uh, also IOBA, which is their messaging platform and their app platform uh, you know, uh, to the two organizations that make the massive event of Tatak South Africa possible. Senate Mobile and Idea Mart are behind uh, Tatak Sri Lanka. Have to thank... Uh, Carol Davids uh, from the Illinois Institute of Technology and her real-time communications lab for Chicago. We have Cluster Creatic and actually Techna Cafe uh, for uh, uh, Columbia. Valencia College have been supporting us for many years now in the Orlando location. Hobrown have uh, been great in supporting us and Deutsche Telekom for uh, Berlin. And uh, where is... I'm missing a couple here. Uh, Applesay, there you go. Sorry for the United Kingdom. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. Uh, and also, I, for example, with Jambons, uh, you know, they need you know a telecoms uh, provider underneath. So we have Telecoms Exchange, where it's a partner in providing the sort of voice and the messaging underneath. And you can see there's just lots and lots of other companies. So this is a big global event coming together, focused around programmable communications. Now, just a few numbers. So we know what we achieved over a thousand registrations, as you already mentioned, Aaron. Um, we kicked off a new initiative. So this is Tad Hack Teens. We had 150 people involved in that. And let's focus more on the high schools uh, and getting them into coding and seeing the power of programmable communications. My son, for example, he's at middle school and he's involved in the sort of Lego leagues. So, uh, you know, they start them off there and then, you know, we're, we're hoping to uh, grab them as they start to get into, do, uh, you know, uh, you know, high school and then into, of course, universities have worked with us and partnered with us uh, for many, many years, actually since the beginning of TATAC, all the way back in uh, 2014. This year, we had three in-person locations. Last year, it was one, Berlin. This year, we had Berlin, Chicago, Orlando, uh, South Africa, even though it was a virtual event, was massive. We had 400 registrations there uh, at Tadak Orlando. That was at Valencia College. We, we, you know, we were nervous, you know, because it's the first time we were actually doing an event, you know, in yeah. person during the pandemic. Uh, so, you know, we had to double the lunchtime food, or food order, which was great because we had more people than we anticipated. And also... It was just so gratifying to see everyone's delight and relief at finally being able to hack together after an 18 month long break. So, <laughs> it, I mean, you could see people were just like, they were chill. It was like, you know, Saturday evening, the hack was, you know, they got like the back broken on part of the API. So they were like more relaxed and people were just chatting and just enjoying being together again. Uh, and bottom line is, if you're involved in real-time communications, you should be part of TADAC in some way or form. And of course, I would say that. But here's the mosaic so you can see real people without masks <laughs> together. Yes, uh, South Africa was virtual, so they had their green screen. There's Berlin down here. Uh, they were, again, uh, sort of uh, uh, in person. Uh, we had... Uh, Gather Town. So it's an interesting uh, app. So Columbia used that because, of course, they had to all be virtual. But let me show you, share with you some of the hacks that were created and some of the secrets to giving a great pitch. But before I do that, actually, the deliverable out of a big hackathon are all the hacks that are created. These remain. We have everything up on YouTube. So just go to tadhack.com. Scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the link to the YouTube channel. And from there, you can see all the hacks that have been created over the years. There's you know, we're well over a thousand of them. It's amazing to see just all the diversity. And this year, even though you know, it was only about a thousand registrations, I mean, we've had two to three thousand registrations in the past. You know, Telnix had a storming event. 
They had like 30 hacks created on their platform. Symbol, which is conversation intelligence, had like 21. Uh, Jam Bonds. Now, I'll be honest, I was worried because, you know, it, it's an open source platform. It's not just a simple API. You've got to, you know, get the uh, platform up and running. You've got to get the uh, telecoms connected. There's several moving parts. But again, they had, you know, uh, some really cool hacks built on them. And I'll highlight a couple that I think really show the power of open source projects being part of uh, Tad Hack. But let me run through some of the hacks that I think are really interesting. So in South Africa, the winner, both of South Africa, but also won several uh, global prizes as well, was Maftua. Now, in South Africa, COVID-19, you know, is still, you know, they haven't had the vaccine distribution like we've had here in North America or, or in Europe. So, you know, it, it's not, you know, vaccine reticence, it's just vaccine access. So schools, universities are still online learning. And, you know, there's a lot of challenges and it's quite expensive. Some of the platforms to uh, take exams online because, you know, issues around cheating. So, um, you know, uh, Maftua is a single app which uh, provides a solution across all the education needs. Uh, Aftur is an Arabic word meaning open, simple, easy to use. Now, the reason these guys won both globally and locally, it's mashing up the sponsors. I know I say that, you know, but it's one of those that here's an example of how to do it. So for the chat tab, they used Telnex. For storage, they used IBM. For facial recognition, they use something from TCS. So these IBM and TCS were local sponsors. Then they used symbol for sentiment analysis. And then if you're bullying or being naughty or saying rude words on the chat, you will then have an automatic disciplinary SMS coming to you, courtesy of Telnix. Uh, then the app that holds the general student records, that's uncontactable. And then IOBA, which I mentioned as being a partner of Tantac for many years, that's the platform that would then take this app and make it available uh, to the South African and broader African market. And the great thing is that the hackers behind this, it was a mum and son, son team, they wrote an excellent web blog. So there's the link and you can read directly from uh, the people who created the hack, which is always fun. Now, it's also per, you know, important to learn from the masters. And similarly, Geeky Team are masters at this game. So that's Lily and Steven. Now, I would show the Wizard Chess one, but it's a bit quiet. So let me just uh, you know, uh, play a little bit of the uh, Unbounding Unbound, um, just to highlight the importance of when you introduce your hack, introduce the team name, the name of the hack, the sponsors used, the summary of the hack. So people in that first minute or so understand what it's about and especially the sponsors because then the sponsors know to pay attention to uh, your pitch. Okay, so let me just play this. Hello, my name is Stephen Goodwin and I'm here at Tad Hack to present my hack of Unbounding Unbound. This uses Telnex and its SMS capabilities for say messaging to and from a phone. At the moment, I'm going through a crowdfunding campaign to get enough supporters for a book I'm writing about old computers and retro games. Now, the publisher, I'm bound for all their good points, don't have any kind of push API. So when anyone supports the project, I don't get any kind of notification. So I spend all day hitting F5. <laughs> Not very efficient. So as you can see, very quickly, you get the point. You know that, you know, if you're uh, Telnix, that you, know, you need to be listening to this and it's going to be using your SMS API. And then as you wrap up, you know, show the learning. So what you thought was good, what could be improved around the APIs and where you're going to take the project next. So this is just, again, you know, all three, four, uh, the hacks I showed there run through that uh, simple process. Now, as I mentioned, so we were just grateful to be back together hacking again. So this one is the go big or go home. Uh, this was a high risk, big hack. It was a lot of moving parts because people hadn't been hacking for like 18 months together. So they were really grateful to be able to come together and do something that mattered intensely. So I'll let Vince 
introduce this. And um, yeah, next slide. So our problem domain is, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of the Miami Collapse building um, yeah. about a few months back. The building collapsed, uh, there were, you know, it was a catastrophe. There, there was a lot of missing persons cases. Um, there was no way to actually figure out uh, how to actually uh, respond to the situation because we never had anything like this. And so like, how do you figure out like where to find somebody, how to deal with which rebel in order to find that person and um, bring them to immediate attention. So um, this led to a lot of deaths. There's also... So as you can see, this is a great example of a local issue that is very important to the hackers. And what they created is it's almost like a, um, you know, rather than a robo dog, it was more like a robo cat, something smaller. And they, again, they used the sponsors technologies to enable it to be very secure and a whole host of neat innovations. It really was uh, a very powerful hack. And normally I am a Nazi when it comes to that five minute limit. But, you know, it was one of those where the team had put so much effort, so many had come together. It was almost like half the uh, people taking part were involved in that particular hack. And they did a great job. Now, it doesn't have to be big picture, you know, uh, important stuff that has a major social impact. Sometimes it can just be cool for cool sake. Now, uh, here I'm going to have uh, Professor Jerry Reed. Uh, he's supported Tatak Orlando for many years now. And what he's going to show is using SMS to control an antique synthesizer. So again, you know, it's not big complex. It's not, it's just like he has an antique synthesizer. Somebody at the hack said, well, why do you need to hack on that? And he did. And it's a <laughs> great example of, again, you can have fun. And, you know, even though it's a fun hack, it could stimulate somebody to realize, oh, wow, we could use it in this situation. So again, never underestimate uh, the importance of just showing something because it's there. Now, uh, David Horton, runs the open source project uh, Jambones. Uh, he's doing a great job in trying to get as broad a community as possible to use his open source CPaaS. And uh, we had several hacks built on it. I'll just show a couple of examples that over that weekend made substantial contributions to David's project, just over that uh, one weekend. So we'll start with Dan and then move on to Sam. Dan Jenkins, and this is my hack um, called Open Source Contributing Back, or something along those lines. Um, so I did a hack with Subspace and Jambones, um, but as Jambones is an open source um, CPaaS, I decided I would add to the CPaaS rather than use it. Um, so I decided I'd quite like to offer DDoS support um, to Jambones customers. Um, in a instant. So again, great example, very important to our industry because uh, many service providers have had uh, DDoS attacks and uh, you know, Dan was able to make a substantial contribution to David's project through TadHack. It's a great example very of cool. what hackathons are about. And then we'll move on to uh, Sam, uh, how he improved on a uh, old hack. So you can you know, take stuff you've done in the past and refresh it with new technology. So over to Sam. <clears throat> Hello, Tad Hack. Uh, my name's Sam Machen, and I'm going to show you what I've been uh, working on the weekend. So uh, what I've done is I've been uh, re-implementing an application I previously built uh, in Node-RED for my father-in-law uh, using the Next Mode Vonage uh, voice API. 
um, and it's a conference call really. He runs his church service um, over a all hands conference call type of, uh, of use case since the start of the pandemic. Um, really nice kind of use case because it's lowest common denominator. Everybody has access to a phone. Um, they've been getting about 30 to 50 people uh, two or three times a week joining these kind of online or on the on the phone services. Um, and he has a, a moderator interface so he can kind of control mute and stuff like that. Um, this uh, UI here is the flow implemented with, with the Nexmo API. Um, there was some quite complicated stuff to do with uh, kind of controlling of the muting because you had to mute every individual participant and keep track of them and stuff. Um, and this is the flow implemented uh, with Jambones. So Jambones has a, a Node-RED package available. Um, and it's a lot easier to, to especially to control all the conference muting. Um, Dave's been really good about implementing a couple of features there. Um, so what so again, what Sam was able to do is to make contributions to that uh, Node Red package to again to improve David's project. So great example of the community coming together and just over one weekend making substantial improvements. Now, of course, we have hacks from all around the world. Uh, again, we had uh, from Colombia here, we had Coffeelytics. Um, there they were using Symbol AI. Now they didn't use Telnex, they used Vox Implant. We've asked Vox Implant for many years to sponsor, they haven't yet, who knows? Uh, <laughs> but uh, he should have used Telnex, but we're not, you know, he was at least using one of the sponsors. And that was, again, a great hack. Uh, and then in uh, Sri Lanka, uh, university team, uh, the acronym is in case of an emergency. Uh, and another great hack for the sake of time, I'll just uh, skip over. But again, using both local, in fact, let me, because I do feel guilty, I should show here. Let me just show this. Here you go. Uh, so they used local sponsors, so Senate Mobile for USSD, LBS, and SMS. Then they used the global sponsors, uh, Jambons, Telnix, and Symbol AI. Again, this was great example of mashing up both local and global sponsors uh, to uh, increase, you know, basically the uh, price part you have available. But also, I think it shows the importance that you can do something that's locally relevant, yet uses both local and global capabilities. Again, to uh, Kadak Global, we have to thank Symbol, Jambones, Telnex, Subspace, Ava Network for uh, supporting us. And there's more. Over the weekend, we were busy in Orlando. So we had a mini hackathon that we ran just before a fire engage. And we had some great hacks out of that. Again, I'm just going to quickly uh, let each of the uh, hackers introduce them. So we'll hear from uh, Genesis first. Hi, everyone. My name is Genesis, and my project is Genesis Mesh Network. And um, so my hack has to do with the metaverse. Um, we've already started to see different brands creating VR experiences um, and also AR experiences. And with the metaverse becoming a new topic of the web, I think um, we will start to see meta stores. And what uh, Genesis did is show how the VI resources, so spaces, it's the VI CPAS, was relevant and could be used in the metaverse. So she actually won third place and $3,000, which is in her bank account already, which is great to see. Uh, moving on to Telepaper. This, for me, is very close to uh, my heart in terms of you know, uh, paper and uh, education. I'm just going to jump so you can actually sort of see the demo working. Hello. Uh, there's enough room. Oh, Not left much room, so <laughs> I'm hoping that there are... Uh... By some stroke of luck, is enough room? <laughs> Thank you very much. She's drawn sideways. So this was basically just showing how very cheap sort of your uh, electronic paper could be used in an education setting. So you could sort of have this shared note paper. Uh, I had to, with my son, go through some intense uh, sort of math training uh, over the summer. And you know, when you're physically there, it's great. When you're apart, you know, he's on its own. And this would really solve uh, some great uh, challenges we had. And then finally, there's always, you've got to have a fun IoT hack in every uh, hackathon. And this one is called Bender the Drunken Arm. Let me just jump to the example. There you go. So this was using voice tech to control, to ask for drinks, and then 
basically this went out and poured your drink in this case it was um jack and coke with uh, more jack less coke <laughs> so that's uh some of the hacks that were created just over the uh, last weekend uh, and all those uh, won prizes uh, and great examples of using programmable communication. So some links, just go to tadhack.com. Uh, currently it's pointing to 2021. You get a summary of all we did, all the pictures, all the videos. Here's the web log. So if you click on summary, it goes here. That has all the uh, winners, also includes all the press coverage. And I did a piece summarizing uh, some of the winners from around the world for Enterprise Connect that was virtual. Uh, and then here's the link for the summary of all we did over last weekend. So uh, even though there's been a pandemic and we're running the events hybrid, we were still able to achieve one hell of a lot. Now for next year, we're going to avoid, because we've got Omicron, we've got the winter wave, it, Q1 is going to be a mess just in terms of infection numbers. So we're just like, okay, we'll skip Enterprise Connect uh, in March and we're gonna put everything into October when hopefully we stop measuring infection rates because it's endemic. We just look at hospital rate, hospitalization rates of vaccinated people. And we're hoping to run TATAC Global sometime in October, 2022, and we'll have TAD Summit. So we won't run an Asia or Mere America separate. We'll just have one event. We're hoping It'll be in November, December. And again, fingers crossed, we might actually have something in person by then. So we can keep our fingers crossed. So anyway, that's uh, my piece. Hopefully it's given you uh, some food for thought on all the cool stuff you can build on programmable communications. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alan. Uh, I always find it inspiring to kind of check out what some of these hacks are. Uh, and you've covered a lot of great uh, it, ideas as well as advice uh, in this presentation for kind of, if you want to, is that as, as you've said, you know, there, there are real dollar prizes in this. There's, there's real money to be had for those who want to hack for, for profit. Uh, but uh, the, the education and the experience around it, the, the, the inspiration I think is, you know, even more valuable. Uh, and so definitely I like some of the tips that you had in here for me personally, I know, because this is kind of a, a hot button issue to me is, you know, the way you emphasize, you know, what makes a good presentation of your hack, because I think that's one of the great opportunities for people participating in a hackathon, especially if you're relatively new to development or new to the industry and you're kind of looking for this as tad hacks can be kind of a springboard to professional employment. Yes. Great way to show, you know, working in a team, working with others, coming up with a cool hack, showing off some technical chops, but also that that presentation skill of being able to communicate your ideas is so, so important. Um, exactly. So I, I appreciate your emphasis on that. Um, I, I have to say I also really liked uh, uh, there were a lot of uh, ones that you covered today and some others I, I've seen on the blog as well that are really, they're not, uh, they're not purely an online hack, right? So they're, they're, whether we're pouring a drink, uh, <laughs> or, uh, flying a drone, I know was one up on, on oh, the yes. blog from Orlando that I saw pretty cool, uh, to, you know, inter interacting with disaster recovery, emergency responses, all that sort of thing. So kind of things that, that cross between the physical world, um, and the, the virtual world, uh, uh, not to mention uh, even a metaverse specific hack uh, recently. So certainly could expect more of those. I imagine. Oh yeah, absolutely. But uh, but yeah, I really like that that um, that aspect of the hackathons because I think that that is another thing that's really valuable about these is that you know within a tad hack you know you've got voice telephony calls, voice recognition, lots of dialogue flow type of projects, right? Yeah. Certainly plenty of SMS and WebRTC video and all those things. And, and those are all really cool technologies that, that we all work with. And there's, there's so much to be done there. But what's fun about seeing people put them together in the hacks is kind of how they mash up those APIs and, exactly. and bring it together. And that's the part that's, you know, inspiring. And I think where a lot of the value gets created too. Exactly. Because, and it also, it's like one of the teams, um, you know, they've seen other teams hacking with WebRTC, but for them, it's like, oh, that's a bit scary. Well, that's all like Google and, oh, wow, that looks so complex. But, you know, 
this time around they were like, we did our first WebRTC hack. You know, <laughs> it, you know it, it's just increasing the community of people that aren't scared by all the technology and acronyms and realize it for what it is. Because again, we're constantly learning how to simplify, how to make it as easy as possible to use these technologies. And it's always so gratifying when a team that maybe is more sort of you know, web browser centric front end stuff then realizes that this scary back end stuff isn't that scary. You know? <laughs> and they use it and then they see, oh, now I could apply it here and here. You know, it was like the telepaper guys. It really is great to see them becoming more confident in using all these real-time communication technologies. And again, look at the telepaper hack. It's great where you see them commenting about just how easy and quick. It was like a couple of minutes and subspace was working and we could see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that, was, that was one I watched uh, as well, the telepaper. And I thought it was kind of fun because it, in, in a way it's a relatively simple but powerful example of how we can think a little bit different about a video chat. Right. Oh. You know, and, and I think they said this in their presentation of, you know, because you you have kind of the, the, the real time note taking being shared on these devices outside of your, you know, separate from your computer, separate from yes. the monitors where you're watching the video chat. It's less distracting than somebody screen sharing in. Right. Exactly. And just that sort of, you know, thought process of, of literally thinking a little bit outside of the box of the monitor there. Yeah. Um, is you know where there still is a lot of room for creativity, even in what we're doing in in more pure video chat applications. Exactly, because so. Jared is a teacher, so he does a lot mm -hmm. of online teaching. So for him, this he sees as essential because, especially with math and you know a lot of practical you know subjects, you know, where you you need to just draw stuff, you need to go through a particular process. Yes, you can show notes. Yes, you can show this. But to be able to work through a problem together, like just dumb stuff, like you know when you're simplifying fractions, or like you, when you're doing algebraic equations, you know, just to be able to write it out and say, no, you're dividing by four across both sides, you know, and then physically, and then you can see the kid going click when you together, and you can write it on a piece of paper. Of course, it's just natural and intuitive. If we can get closer to it by using these technologies, you know, and that's why Jared, for him, because he's a teacher, because he sees this and he's living this day in, day out, he sees this as essential to improving online education. Yeah, absolutely. Well, really appreciate it, Alan. Uh, always a pleasure to talk with you. you. Always a pleasure to see what's going on with Tad Hack too. You know, for our viewers, you know, there's there's so much to be learned about WebRTC, but but I think, you know, even if you are already experienced in WebRTC and video technologies or telecoms more broadly, make sure you check out the TAD hacks. You know, I've seen industry experts like Dan Jenkins participating there uh, in the TAD hacks, as well as yeah. people new to it. Um, and, uh, it, and at least go check out that YouTube channel for TAD hack and, and see all those different ideas of what people have done. Um, I think there's so much possibility out there and really appreciate all the work that you've done in this for how many years have you been doing this now? Alan? Uh, yeah, well, it started, well, we started planning in 2013, but, you know, 2014 was the first one. So, yeah, we'll be coming into our eighth year. Time flies. That's incredible. And how much has changed in that eight years, too, yes. since you started this. That's it. But also how powerful the technologies have become, how much yeah. easier it is, even running the events, you know, because we've had to be hybrid. You know, it, it just takes me at the front and I'm managing, you know, the video stuff and all the other, you know, sort of moving parts. But the technologies now, from a user perspective and both from a programming perspective are just so powerful. You can do so much more than in the past. It's really yeah. great to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks again for joining us, Alan. Really appreciate it. Thanks You're all welcome. of you for joining us today on WebRTC Live. As we always do, we'll post this video to YouTube soon, as well as to our blog at webrtc.ventures. Our next episode will be Wednesday, January 19th, 2022, where we will host a, another panel of our engineers at WebRTC Ventures to talk about recent things that they've learned building video applications, share some of their real world expertise. If you want to learn more about our upcoming episodes, you can follow us on Twitter at WebRTC Ventures, join our email list at WebRTC.Ventures. Alan, where should they go if they want to learn more about TadHack? TadHack.com. There you go. 
Lots of great events coming up there, virtual and in person. So definitely check it out. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Let's make it live. Thanks for joining us for WebRTC Live. Visit our website at webrtc.ventures to learn more about our custom design and development services and to learn more about upcoming episodes of WebRTC Live.